This is Twit. The team at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, plan to build a Venus exploration rover that will survive the surface of Venus where temperatures average 464 degrees Celsius, or that's 867 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very hot. Joining us to talk about how to make a rover without conventional sensors, computers, or power systems that will burn up is Evan Ackerman, contributing editor at the IEEE Spectrum. Welcome to the show, Evan. Hey, Megan. So first, let's talk a little bit about the longest time a spacecraft has survived on the surface of Venus. Yeah, the world record, or I guess the Venetian world record for survival on the surface is just 127 minutes. And that was from a Soviet space probe that landed back in the early 80s. And the Soviets had been sending a bunch of these. And I think um, the, the next longest survival rate was like 38 minutes. And... It's not like anything was going wrong. The design life for these things was maybe 20 minutes each before the heat just totally overpowered the electronics and they died. <laughs> so so the heat is a challenge. Uh, are there other challenges in on Venus? The heat is the big one. Um, the atmospheric pressure is very, very high. It's, uh, I think, 92 atmospheres equivalent to being 3,000 feet under the ocean. So that's a lot of pressure, but electronics and spacecraft can handle that. Venus also has a sulfuric acid atmosphere, but that atmosphere, the acid doesn't actually reach the ground. So once you get down there, as long as you can handle the pressure, um, really it's the heat that's the problem. And it's a really big problem. So what we're looking at now, if uh, if you're watching the video, is the automaton rover. So it's it's a d machine that, that might not burn up. Can you talk a little bit about this? <laughs> Well, the, the whole idea behind this machine is that, yes, it will not immediately burn up as soon as it touches down. So NASA has this amazing program called NIAC, which is the um, Innovative Advanced Concepts Program. And it's basically this big pile of money that NASA gives out to people with crazy ideas. So this particular idea for a Venus rover um, it was just some engineers at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory like talking over lunch. And they started talking about, well, you know, in order to explore Venus, you're going to need something with no electronics in it because all the electronics will just kind of melt. So how do you build a rover with no electronics? And they came up with this idea of just kind of going back to, you know, the era of mechanical computers and, uh, you know, pocket watches and, and clocks and just building a rover that doesn't have any electronics but can still do all of the stuff that you need a rover to do, like walk around or, or move around and avoid obstacles, um, store power, collect power, transmit power, and even transmit data. How, how exactly is that, that last part happening? Like I can understand kind of the me mechanical approach for maneuvering around and all that kind of stuff. But when I think of capturing data from sensors and then transmitting that, and then this hostile environment of being so incredibly hot, like how do you manage that aspect of getting the data actually from there back to Earth so we can do something with it? Yeah, I think this is the coolest part of, of the Venus rover concept. So th they thought about a couple ideas. Um, the first was that they would actually store data on phonograph records, uh, like you play music on or you used to play music on, if anyone knows what those are. But they'd be these metal phonograph records. <laughs> okay, metal, rover would... uh, not vinyl. Because yeah, in my yeah, head, I was vinyl. like, wait a minute, that's not going to work. <laughs> vinyl can't handle a summer day. I know that. No, exactly. But, um, so they'd be metal, and the rover would inscribe these uh, mechanically, and it could fit about a megabit of data on each. And then one idea was when the record was full, they would attach it to a hydrogen balloon and send it up into the atmosphere. And then a solar-powered drone would somehow snag this record and then play it back and transmit that to a satellite. So that that was an actual idea that they had, um, but they thought it was they figured out it was too complicated. And so they came up with something even more innovative, which is just to use a, a radar reflector on the back of the rover along with a, a shutter. And so the way this would work is that a spacecraft in orbit could uh, bounce radar off of the surface of Venus and it could bounce radar off of the rover itself. And then by moving the shutter over the radar reflector, the strength of that radar return uh, could be changed. So you can start sending back strong returns and weak returns, and that turns into ones and zeros, and that's how you get data back. Hmm. So we're always talking about going to Mars. Elon Musk says we're headed there soon. And But why don't we talk about going to Venus? Like, are there more challenges? Could, uh, could we go to Venus inside 
this uh, automaton before we could get to Mars? <laughs> I don't think we'd want to go to the surface of Venus. It's pretty inhospitable. Like Mars, you know, the, the Martian, the movie was pretty accurate. Like with a little bit of life support, you can you can survive there. Uh, Venus, not so much. But NASA is actually funding another study through this innovative advanced concept program that um, they're looking at, you know, maybe we don't have to go to the surface of Venus. Maybe we can just live in the clouds instead. And, and they're actually thinking about, well, why don't we just send a blimp with a couple people in it that could go around Venus and just hang out above all the, all the heat and all the pressure and just check things out from there. Um, what ways could this technology uh, that we're talking about here be used here on planet Earth? I, I mean, I realize it has a very you know specific focus for traveling to Venus and collecting there, but are there ways that it could be used here as well? Yeah, that's that's a great question. That's something that NASA is always thinking about when it's funding these projects. And they, there's a couple ways that a rover like this could be really useful. Um, Fundamentally, it's designed to be a rover that is pretty much like indestructible by any environment you put it in. So it will quite happily operate in a very high radiation environment. Um, you could send it like into a volcano and it would keep working. And the other really cool thing about it is that is because the structure of the rover is so resistant to high temperatures, you can completely sterilize the entire thing. So if we ever get into a situation on some alien planet where you know, there's something weird growing or crawling around and we want to go take a sample. Uh, this is a rover that you could sterilize to make sure that not, no bacteria from Earth would contaminate, you know, this, this, this alien that you just found.